Okay, this is the lesson that we've been waiting for. This is one that I've gotten a lot of feedback uh, from students who've been working ahead of where I've been making videos and they said this is like the hardest concept. And now that I'm studying the pages and looking at how they present this, I understand why this is hard. The uh, curriculum that I teach in our Christian school here, we take these problems and we divide it up over a period of three weeks, just adding a little step. Um, every couple, every several days, we add a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and get a lot of practice before we jump in doing the hardest of these problems. But they throw it all at you at once and only give you a few problems to practice on. So uh, follow with me. Let me go through the steps and uh, explain it as we go. We're going to do like two problems. I made these up. They are different than the example problems and they are not ones that you have on your homework because you need, some, you need enough practice doing the ones on your homework. And then we're going to just start the one that you have in your, one of the ones that you have in your homework, okay? And then I'll let you finish that one on your own. So completing the square. What that means is... We're going to take the x squared minus 8x. I like to leave a space here. And then what you covered back on page 14 and 15 was an intermediate step. That's where you take half of this term here. The I call it the middle term, okay? The x term. Take half of that and you're going to square it. So what's half of negative 8? Whatever it is, you just multiply it times one half, we'll get negative eight over two would be negative four. Now it's not negative four that we're adding, it's negative four squared, okay? So that would be positive 16. Now we do the same thing on both sides. We have to add 16 on both sides of the equation. Now, the reason I did that is because this then becomes a quantity squared. Do you see how this is the same as x minus 4 times x minus 4? If I did the FOIL method, I would get this back again. All right? So I can actually write this as x minus 4, the quantity squared. So I have completed the square. That's where the term comes from. I've completed the square by adding the 16, and now I have a quantity squared equals, now I simplify that side, and I get 20. So far so good? All right. <clears throat> now, we did this in an earlier lesson. We can undo the square by doing the square root of both sides, and this just pops out. Okay, so that's easy. Now we need to remember to do plus or minus because the square root of 20 is plus or minus. And then 20 is 2 times 2 times 5. So the 2 pops out. And we have the square root of 5. And again, that was from the previous pace, 1104, that we talked about how to do that. And now I just add the 4 to both sides. Now I always put it in front of this plus or minus. So x equals 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 5, and we're done. Okay, so this is solving by completing the square. Let's talk about those steps again real fast. We uh, put a little gap in here, right? put the 4 on the other side. We take half the middle term, so half of negative 8 is negative 4, and we square that to get the 16. Half the middle term squared, add that to both sides. All right, so that keeps it balanced. Then we can factor this to be a quantity, which is half the middle term, all right? The quantity squared. The next step is to do the square root of both sides, and then bring the four over, and we have plus or minus the square root of that. Okay, now they jump right in. And again, I wish you could get some more practice just doing some easy ones like this. But right away, they jump in with a problem where we have to get rid of a coefficient. So we, if we have a number in front of the x squared term, we actually have to divide by that coefficient and get rid of that first, okay? So that gives me x squared minus 9 halves x, I'm going to leave a gap, equals 5 halves. Now, what is half 
whoops, half of nine halves, negative nine halves, and it would be nine over four. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to square that. So we add we, half the middle term is nine fourths squared is eighty one fourths. That's what we're going to add to both sides is eighty one fourths. All right, are you still with me? Now this could be factored into two parentheses since it's the same quantity and it's going to be squared. I can just write it like this, x, because this is minus, this is minus. If this had been a plus here, then this would be a plus, okay? I just want to point that out to you. In both of these examples, and even the next one we're going to do, they're minuses, but that's not, this is not always minus. It depends on what the sign is in front of the middle term. So what goes here is half the middle term. Okay, not the squared, but half the middle term. Nine, uh, this should have been 16, sorry. Just notice that, nine fourths. <clears throat> because nine fourths times nine fourths would be the 81 sixteenths. Negative nine fourths x plus negative nine fourths x would give me the 9 over 2 in the middle term. All right. Now, over here, we need to get a common denominator. So this would become 40 and 16. I'm multiplying both of them by 8. So 8 plus 4 is 121 over the square root of 16. I'm doing the square root of this side. So we do the square root of both sides. And I get x minus 9 fourths equals plus or minus. Now maybe you didn't know that the square root of 121 is 11, but it is over 4. Okay? Now I'm going to take the 9 fourths to the other side. x equals 9 fourths plus or minus 11 fourths. All right, now watch this. <laughs> We're not done. So 9 fourths, I can add to 11 fourths and get 20 over 4, which reduced is 5. And I can do 9 fourths minus 11 fourths, and since I have a common denominator, 9 minus 11 is 2, so I get 2 fourths, which reduced is one half, actually negative one half, because nine minus 11 would be negative two. So negative two fourths or negative half. So I have two answers now for x. So it started off pretty complicated. We take half the, we first divide through everything by two. And then we take half the middle term, square that, add that to both sides. And then the half the middle term is what goes in the parentheses. So x minus half the middle term. The quantity squared equals, and then we had to combine these over here, okay? Take the square root of both sides, and then just keep solving for x until you get to the very last step. Now, let me erase that, <coughs> all of this. And we're gonna take one problem from your homework and just get you started, okay? And walk you through the first steps. In fact, maybe it'd be a good idea just for you to take this problem and write it down. Stop the video for a minute and then you try to solve it. See how far you can get, all right? I'll wait for you to turn it off. Go ahead, turn it off, solve it, and then turn it back on and let's see if we're on the right track after you get through a few steps. I'm still waiting for you to turn it off. Okay, are you back now? You solved it. Let's see how far you got and if you did it correctly. So we have an ex a coefficient in front and we have to first <coughs> divide everything by that number. All right, so we have x squared minus seven halves x equals, oh, I can simplify that and just get two, yay. Now we're gonna take seven halves times one half to get half the middle term, okay, which is gonna give me seven over four, all right. Again, we have an x here, the quantity squared, but what is half the middle term 
squared 49 over 16. All right, so we're gonna add 49 sixteenths on the other side as well. Now, this is over one, let's get a common denominator. So 16, we'll make that 32 over 16. Now I can add 32 plus 49. So 4, 7, 80, 81 over 16, okay? Sometimes doing the fractions is just the hardest part because we think we're done with fractions and we don't have to deal with fractions, but we're gonna deal with fractions all the way through math until we get to the end. So <clears throat> I'm not gonna take this any further. We got this far. The last couple of steps hopefully aren't too hard for you. We're gonna do the square root of both sides. We can actually simplify this and a fraction is gonna pop out. So we'll have plus or minus that fraction and then we bring the 7 fourths over. We can add those two fractions and then subtract those two fractions. So you should get two answers for this particular problem. All right, this is, I will, I will be honest with you, this is one of the hardest concepts that you have done yet in, uh, in Algebra 1. I'm looking at, I was looking ahead at the self-test and PACE test. Thankfully, there's only a few problems on both tests that are of this type and they don't have the hardest ones. Uh, but you do need to get some practice doing that and you might even, if you don't feel real confident, you might uh, just look online for some uh, more examples um, and some more problems that you can solve on your own and just gain a little more confidence before you try to do them on the uh, checkup, self-test, and pace test. I hope this lesson helped.